Hi guys, in the previous video we looked at integration by parts. We discussed that the U term is selected such that it's a term that uh, reduces to a constant after a number of, uh, uh, after differentiating a number of times. But the question is, what if you have expressions like this, where regardless of the term you pick as your U, you can clearly see that regardless of how many times you differentiate, that term will never become a constant. How do you integrate such expressions? So I'm going to uh, demonstrate how you work out one, and then I'll ask you guys to try out and integrate the second one. So let's see how it goes. Well, it turns out that there's actually just a simple trick that you have to understand. Say you have e to the x, sine x dx. Well, you approach it like the way you'd approach any integral, really. And, of course, in integration by parts, of course, we know to say we have this term to use. So, of course, this is trying to show us what to use as our u between the two parts here. Which term becomes u? Well, in this case, we have logs, inverse trig, and then we have algebraic trig, and then that is going to be exponent. So, this is telling us to say that the first one that comes is going to be trig. Of course, here it might not really matter which one you choose to be your, your u, but we're just going to follow that. So here we're seeing that trig has to be taken as u. So if trig, the trig part is going to be u, meaning u is going to be sine x, this tells us to say that the derivative of u will be derivative of sine is cos x dx. Okay, then apart from that, we the rest of it, if sine x is u, then the rest of it has to be dv. So you have that and the dx there, all that has to be dv. So dv is equal to, uh, that's e to the x dx. So that v from here, of course, being an exponent to just be e to the x still. So by integrating by parts, this becomes the integral of e to the x sine x dx by definition, you know to say that if this is taken as u dv, then the definition of by parts tells us to say that this will be equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So you already have what uv and what du is, so I can just substitute. Our u was sine x, so I'm going to have our v was e to the x, then sine x then minus the integral of our v again, e to the x, then our du. Our du, we have cos dx, cos x dx. So you have cos x dx. At this point, we observe that this part here still requires to be integrated. So let's see how we integrate that. So again, to integrate this, we have to use by parts. So, in the same way, we're going to use the same, um, the same method. So, we'll choose again u to be equals to cos x, so that du will be equal to uh, negative sine x dx. Then the rest of it will be dv. So, dv will be equals to e to the x dx. Again, v will just be equals to e to the x. Okay, once this is done, we now do the by parts expression. So this integral here can color it yellow. Just focusing on that part. So that integral by parts, e to the x, cos x dx, That will be equal to uv, so I'll start with v, e to the x, then u, cos x, then minus v, our v is e to the x, then du. Our du comes with a minus, which makes this a plus outside, and then we have sine x dx. Now I'll get this expression and take it back into the original expression. So our original expression is this one here, the full one. 
Okay, so I'll bring it down. Now remember, on the left side, we still have what we are integrating, the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Now we've just seen that this part here, when integrated, it gives us this part. So I'll just plug it there. So in place of this, I'll have e to the x cos x plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So I'll remove the brackets. This now becomes e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Okay, so now that this is done, now I have to make a quick observation. You see, if you tried to integrate this part again, you see that you just keep going in circles, sine, then cos, then sine, then cos, just like that. Well, it turns out that just from here, you don't have to go any further. Observe that what you have here is actually similar to what you're integrating in the first place. Because of that, what you'd have to do here is group these two terms on one side. You see, you could have done this even if you had a constant outside here. Because uh, sometimes maybe e, like in the second example, I've given you e to the power x, uh, 2x. So it means that most likely after differentiating or integrating, there's going to be a constant outside here that will keep showing up. So that constant, pull it out, and then observe still that this will literally be the same as this. So group them on one side. So on the left side, now I'll have e to the x sine x, the one which was already here. Then bring this term to the left side as well. It becomes plus e to the x sine x dx. That's the integral. On the right side, we now only have e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x. So from here, you see to say these are literally the same, so we can just add them up. This becomes 2, the integral of e to the x sine x dx being equal to e to the x sine x minus e to the x sine x. Now that's cos x. So in the end, we can just divide by 2. So we have the integral of e to the x cos x dx is now equal to e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x over 2. Of course, what we're evaluating here, we had no uh, limits of integration. So, of course, we're just going to say plus C. Okay, this concludes this question. So, what mm -hmm. I'll ask you guys is to try out the, uh, the question mm -hmm. that I had below. So, try it out and let's see what you're going to find. Bye, right, guys. See you in the next class.